animals of all kinds. When I was seven, I started actually raising homing pigeons. I had a flock of homing pigeons. So that was another thing where, and, and this was maybe the biggest thing that really set me going was a, as a little boy, uh, you know, I have a lot of free time because I'm like seven or eight years old, right? So I'm in my pigeon coop and I just stand there and I just watch them. I, I watch them eat. I watch them drink. I watch them figure out who they're going to be mated with. I watch them build their nest, get on and off their eggs, feed and raise their young ones. And basically the way that their life worked was that if, if you're raising pigeons, you usually have a stack of boxes and you put a, uh, you put a bowl in each box and they decide who they're going to marry and, and, they, and they make their house in, in their little apartment there by, by, you know, building their nest in that bowl. They're out for a few hours every day. They come back and they feed their babies and then they go to sleep. And right across the yard, we were living in a stack of boxes where people decided who they were going to marry. And uh, like the pigeons, sometimes they fought and squabbled. They, they made their nest. They left for a few hours every day. They came home and fed their babies. And we went to sleep. And it just seemed to me that our lives were really the same. A lot of the details were different. But the overall, the overall connection and the overall sense of relation were the overwhelming commonalities for me. Wow. And you remember noticing those similarities at such an early age? Yeah, because nobody told me any differently. You know, it just was obvious. Wow. We were raising babies. They were raising babies. We had our house in our little box. They had their house in their little box. Right. That's, that's great because even just listening to you retell some of those stories really has me have a, a lot of flashbacks of myself growing up with my, my nanny, my grandparents. And my grandfather would, like, hunt in the local woods sometimes. And this was, like, in the 80s when nobody hunted, like, in, not in that park. But he would go find rabbits and bring them home and, and eat them. And when we'd go visit our, um, our relatives in northern Italy, we would go into the, in, in, into the mountains for a week. And I remember, uh, like, even going for so many hikes with my father. And I, now I can think about all the times when nature was all, all around me and why this, this topic is of so much interest to me. But I guess, like, we've always lived in, like, suburbs or cities or wherever, and I never realized the impact that it, it had on me until mm -hmm. even... Uh, now and when I read the book The Overstory recently mm -hmm. and uh, it really has got me down this this path and you know, the next one that I, I, I'm so excited to read is, is Becoming Wild mm -hmm. because the, one of the reasons for this this podcast is just trying to have humans that are a little bit more humble in what we know and don't know about the physical world around us and not to have so much certainty about what we think we know because there's so much proof that we've had recently in the last 50 years of how we really don't know what the animal kingdom is capable of you know for example like we didn't know that uh, dolphins had sonar for example how feeling and intelligent animals like pigs were and it seems like every year there's just something else that comes out like the the hidden life of trees how they communicate with each other and all of these magical things right